everybody. Hi, it's Becky from PowerToolsWithThread.com. That's my blog. Did you guys see my blog post? There was a winner. Peggy Perry. My random number generator app on my phone chose, well, there were 469 comments. That's a lot. Yay! And it chose number 83. So, that was Peggy Perry. So, Peggy, if you're watching, I sent you a response to your uh, comment on my blog. Vlog. Sorry. Joy tries to keep me straight on that. And um, you need to email me your mailing address and I will send you what you want. And you are getting the Sweet Mary and Jolly Bar. It comes with a friendship bracelet quilt pattern in it. How nice, huh? You are getting a Jolly Bar book. And for those who are unaware, a Jolly Bar is a five by 10 inch rectangle, like half of a layer cake. And they are, uh, they're made by Moda, or they're distributed by Moda. And they are the brainchild of Kim Jolly from Fat Quarter Shop up in Buda, Texas. So, oh, so you get the Jolly Bar book, which is the pattern book. Don't let me forget, I wanna tell you all about Buda. Uh, lots of different quilt patterns. There's like 20 different quilt patterns in here. And a half hexy ruler. These all were duplicates that I had in my stash. So, I don't know why I had duplicates. And uh, I wanna make it clear the Fat Quarter Shop is online only. They do not have a physical store. But the Kim Jolly and her husband and their work crew are up in Buda. If you look it up on the map, it's B-U-D-A. And if you're not from around here, you say Buda. <laughs> but it's Buda. You locals know that, right? We just got back from a very long, nice Labor Day weekend. I don't even know if I got on the internet. I just unplugged. I needed it. It was great. And um, I got home and I was well, on the way home. I was looking at my phone. I want to thank you and welcome to all my new subscribers. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. I hope you get a lot out of this. I usually just ramble on and just chit chat, but you know, something to do. I tell my husband it keeps me out of the bars. <laughs> okay, so much here going on. While I was there at the coast, I got two quilt blocks done from the Connecting Threads Mercantile Block of the Month. I finished up part two. But I'll have to tell you, there were some errors in that pattern. Uh, and, and they've sent emails saying that there were errors in part two, part three and part four, I think. Um, now I gotta go back and find those and because I didn't print them out when I got them because I wasn't near a printer when I got them and I didn't think about it. And So I'm not entirely sure I'm gonna get kits from connecting threads anymore. You know. I know places like the Fat Quarter Shop up in Buda, <laughs> they pattern test and pattern test and pattern test and pattern test and, and uh, you know, that's a sign of, I mean, it's good quality. And uh, so I had found an error in part one, or no, part two, I called them and told them that they had their, fa their uh, fabric named wrong and then also received emails about other errors in the patterns and so that's very frustrating because if you skip an email you don't see it how would you know right it's tough anyway let me go on to something else uh, okay when I was at my Kimber Bell embroidery event that I went to at the All Brands Creative Sewing Center in San Antonio there was a lady in front of me Eileen she was super sweet she's an instructor she's a professor you know way smart and um, we were hooping our our uh, stabilizer in our hoops and hers was flopping around she was fiddling with it and fussing with it and she turns around to me and she says hooping sucks and I laughed we all laughed I said you know what 
You're right, it does. And that makes, that would make a great t-shirt. So, I'm working on a t-shirt for Hooping Sucks. So, I got, I screwed up the cutout, but I created a, uh, whoops, let me get this right. An embroidery hoop and the lettering. I'm still working on the lettering. You see that? It's going to look like this. I'm working on this shirt. I think that'll be cool. But the lettering will go in front of the hoop. See? So, I just thought that was hilarious. And I, um, I emailed, I was out on the Urban Threads website, and they said, hey, do you have any ideas for us? Let us know. So I emailed them about that. And uh, they emailed me back and said, thanks, we'll send it to our design team and think about it. So, oh well. I came up with it first. But it'd be cool to have a stitch out of that. You know, that'd be really neat. So I was doing that. Oh, also while I was at the coast, I got everything cut and almost put together for the merriment quilt. This is Jennifer's merriment, Gingerbread's Jennifer's merriment. It's a panel quilt. It's a, it's a small wall hanging. And um, you know, it's funny. See how all these squares are just pieced across the top? Like it's all the same fabric across the top. Why isn't from here to here just one strip? Of the same fabric but it's not they have you put all these seams together and let me tell you what matching these little points right here matching that you know and getting these all right see that getting these all right and then that's something else that's that's work you guys <laughs> hours Hours, hours, and hours. I got a little thread on me. Whoop, another one. Workplace hazards. But I really, really like this. This is just an absolutely darling quilt. Saw it hanging on the wall in my local quilt shop, Scrappy Quilter, over in Shirts, Texas. And uh, just really, in, uh, I was like, oh, I have to make that. But it's. I guess because it's small and because it's a panel, the designer wanted it to have you feel like you're piecing a bunch of stuff but whoo there's a lot of piecing that goes into this you wouldn't think so as small as it as it is but anyway <clears throat> I stopped while I was down at the coast I went over to we have a little place for you new folks we have a little place in Port O'Connor Texas which is on the corner of the Gulf of Mexico and Matagorda Bay um, probably about halfway between Galveston and Corpus Christi so there, the nearest quilt shop is 20 some miles away up in Port Lavaca. So I went up there to go visit Jean and she let me know there are three spots left for the quilt retreat that's happening at Yoakum at the Three Oaks Retreat Center. And that is the 12th through the 15th of September. Two weeks. Yay! So excited. I can't wait to go. While I was there, I picked up, oh, if you are interested in going, you need to contact before it's a quilt, Jean Waymeyer, and I will put the contact information below in the description box. It's going to be a lot of fun. There'll only be, I think, 15 total at the retreat. So, it's, well, it'll be small. It'll be a lot of fun. She gave me the list of, you know, what we're going to do each day and whatnot. They feed you. It's all good. So, she had some kits there in different colorways and we're going to make a quilt that's got a wave bottom edge i've never done that very excited about that that's very cool so i have a ruler for that too i think there was a quilt in a day ruler that i have for doing it's vine edging vine scallop borders i'm gonna have to go dig around i'm gonna look over at my ruler stash and see if i can get that Take it with me. My list. Ooh. Anyway, so I picked this up. And uh, that'll be pretty, don't you think? It'll be a pretty quilt. Sorry for the glare. I don't want to take it apart. I had to bring home a lot of stuff from the coast so I could take it with me on my retreat. But I got that. And I got, the other day, Missouri Star had a daily deal of Bella Toscana Fat Quarters. 20... I don't know how many there were. Um, maybe 15 fat quarters. How many we got? 
three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen. Fat quarters. Bella Toscana, kind of, um, this looks like, like a piece of bread. So it's all foodie, kind of Italian foodie looking. See that? Foodie looking stuff. That'll make a nice wall hanging in a kitchen, won't it? That'll work in my kitchen. I need to find some sort of um, pattern for a wall hanging in there and put that up. Or maybe even place mats or something. Eh, we'll see. Something like that. So, some of you asked me about the Target paper, print and stick Target paper from Designs and Machine Embroidery. I will link to it below, okay, in the description box. You gotta go underneath the video, there's a little down arrow and it says more or something like that, but you click on that and it'll open up and you'll see everything I'm talking about. This is what it is. This print and stick target paper is awesome. And it's, if you have a, if you do machine embroidery, this is what it looks like right here. I think they could have chosen a prettier embroidery design than a, what it looks like a spider web. Anyway, whatever. So what this stuff is really good for is if you are doing continuous designs on something, like if you're gonna run um, or if you want to do like embroidery down on a tunic and you want to make sure that everything meets up just perfect and whatnot, or if you wanted to do designs down like the leg of a jean or something and it's multiples, what you do is you print this and it's got a slick back, but the other side of it feels kind of fabricy and it's very sticky. And so it prints out on the fabric part, okay? And the back of the fabric is very sticky. And then um, your design, of course, will come with crosshairs and you print that out and then you trim it so that the crosshairs are like right on the edge of the paper, okay? And then you can position that exactly where you want it to go and then put your needle over the middle crosshairs on the design and start it from there and everything should match. It does, it works, I swear. Good stuff, good stuff. But I, again, I'll link to this below. Even if you don't have a plan, um, it's good to have this in your stash just in case you think you wanna do it. You know, once you pull up a design and go, oh, that's cool. So I am using this print and stick target paper. I've got the half yard Crete wreath half half yard wreath quilt from Fat Quarter Shop right behind me and I am using an Emily Scott continuous embroidery design to quilt it and it's turning out really really nice. A lot of you asked me for a tutorial on how to do that. There are videos out there on, the, on YouTube on it. I'll go ahead and link to them below but um, I'll do a video on how to do that because That'll be fun. It is fun. It is fun to have that come out. And you know what? Even if it doesn't come out perfect, just make it work. I mean, just kind of, nobody's going to get up there and look and, oh, that one's off. And if they do, they're not your friend. Find new friends. Okay. The purse that I carry every day. So, I have a beautiful Dooney Burke. Is that what it's called? Dooney? Dooney? It's a Dooney. Whatever that is. Is it Dooney Burke? Y'all, I'm not designer savvy. Unless we're talking about quilt fabric. But it's a Dooney and it's really nice and it's, you know, it's so big. It's solid leather. It's got different compartments. And I pack it full, right? So I've been carrying it. I mean, this thing weighs 8 to 10 pounds, I swear. So I've been carrying it and um, I started having a lot of pain right between my shoulder blades. I got to where I couldn't sleep anymore on this side. It, this is still sore. It's been, I've got this muscle right here. It's been sore for months. I've been going to my chiropractor. And then he, you know, he put my bone, one of them bones was wonky. So he put that back in place. And then he's like, are you carrying a heavy? Cause he looked at my purse. He's like, how much does that weigh? And I said, eh, a lot. And he said, you need to get a cross body bag. And I said, I know I had, the only one I have is dinky. I mean, it's like this big. You know, it's little. Well, I carry more than 
than this and I don't want to carry a 10 pound bag and even when I go minimal it's this is not big enough there's just no way those beautiful bags that Terry makes joy oh gosh I'd love to have one joy send me Terry's information I need to contact her because I want a bag anyway um so I was looking are y'all familiar with so sweetness uh, Sarah Lawson she's a bag designer she's got a bag called the Appaloosa bag and it's a it's a cross body and it's a little bit bigger it's like 7 by 10 that's a that's a little bit bigger and that'll work you know I cannot tell y'all how much I hate making bags I hate making bags that's just not my I don't I don't get any joy out of that I don't get any fun out of that I just you know, and it's so bad because I go to the store and I look at these bags. So the closest would be a Vera, not Vera Wang. What do they call it? Vera Bradley. <clears throat> the closest idea would be a Vera Bradley because they're made out of, it almost, they almost look like quilting cottons, you know. So the closest I could get would be a Vera Bradley. But they want so much money for those things. <laughs> And you know, if you know how to do this, you look at that and you're like, I ain't paying $115 for that. <laughs> it's hard, you guys. Oh, it's tough. But then I hate making bags. And so do I just pay the 100 bucks and get a bag? Or do I suffer through and make it myself and, you know, possibly screw it up? I mean, what do I do? So... This weekend, I was like, I'm going to make a bag. I'm going to make a bag. I'm going to make this bag. And so I went through the whole process. I've got the Appaloosa bag pattern. I'll link to it below. It's very cute. I have some of the coolest fabric that looks like, um, what is it? Is it called embossed? Embossed leather. Look at that. I got that on a shop hop years ago. I think I got it. There used to be a quilt store in Gonzales, Texas. It's gone now, I think. But uh, she closed a year, year and a half ago, two years. I love this fabric. And this is totally me because the fabric is a big thing too. You know, I don't want to do a spring fabric because then I'm not going to carry it at winter. And I don't want to do, I don't know. I guess it's because my 20 years in the military, I carried a black purse everywhere. I'm not a flashy dresser. I'm not stylish. I don't do, I'm not, I just don't, I don't know. It's hard to, it's hard to say. Y'all, I could wear clothes off the shelf at Walmart all day long and be happy as can be. I'm not a dressy person. And as soon as I retire, life's going to get better for me, believe me. <clears throat> but, um, so I'm, I'm not big into, if you notice, I wear the same earrings. Every video, same earrings. I'll wear them forever. Forever. I'm not a big fancy person like that. I just don't. And, and God bless those that are. This girl I work with, Ronnie, she's dressed to the nines every day. And I look at her and I'm like, how did you put that together? It's not that I don't want to. It's that I can't. That's not me. Okay? That's why I was in the military. 20 years. Put on the uniform. They told me what to wear. I went in the Air Force because it matches my eyes. Hmm? Blue. Blue. <laughs> I don't look good in green, so I didn't join the Army. And I get motion sickness, so I didn't join the Navy, okay? Really, this is how I was thinking when I was a kid, <laughs> and I joined the surface. So I do like leather purses, and I thought, well, okay, this looks like leather, so this will be a nice bag, right? And it's brown, it'll go with everything all year long. It'll work fine. I need a lining. I took everything down there. I bought all of the stuffings for it. The the I bought the ooh, look look. I bought the Interphone Plus, the Bozel Interphone Plus. I bought two and a half yards. Well, these this is Shape Flex 101, Pelon Shape Flex 101. Got it at Walmart. Um, you need two and a half yards. This is a two yard thing for six seventy five. So you had to get two of those. I bought a zipper. I bought the Peltex 70. I got that. Got that. Got everything going. Let me see. And uh, I, 
I have this tray full of um, magnets and D rings and slide. Uh, no, not a slider. All of the stuff you might need that I have picked up over the years. Don't you know I didn't have the piece of hardware that I needed? The slider for the crossbody bag? I didn't have it. You know, it's annoying. Let me show you. I printed it in black and white because I'm cheap on ink. But this is the Appaloosa bag. So, see it's crossbody. It has a single flap. It's about the right size. But it's got a bunch of little accordion pockets right there. And I think that'll work for me. So even though I don't like making bags, <clears throat> I'm going to suffer through this. I hate making bags, y'all. Okay. And there's only three pieces to the pattern. It's not that big of a deal. It's just, you guys, I just... I'd rather quilt and embroider all day long than make a bag. I don't mind the in-the-hoop zipper bags. Those are fine. God bless those people who can do that. You know, and have it come out looking nice and not looking like... You know, it was a home ec project. Anyway, I think that's all I had to talk to you guys about. This video is probably way long. But it's been days, days, days. Hey, I contacted, there's a sh shop hop coming up the 26th through the 28th of September. Fall frenzy, fall, fall frolic shop hop. This is in my local area. There is probably a fall frolic around you as well. They tend to do that all over the place. Um... I have contacted four of the five stores and asked them if I can bring my video camera to do a shop spotlight on them, and all of them have agreed. Won't that be fun? The fifth store is in Fredericksburg. I didn't contact them because I don't know if I'm going to go that far. That's pretty far for me. So I'll have to check with my girl Lisa. She and I are going together. So <clears throat> hitting five stores in one day is, y'all, that's a haul. So anyway, all right, that's it, you guys. I will talk to you later. Go sew something. Bye.